Lovecraftian literature has always been an essential material in the horror scene, be it movies, video games, books, TV shows. The inspiration people get from H.P. Lovecraft's works is nearly endless. In the video games industry, we had classics such as Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, or Bloodborne as a more indirect, subtle one. While some of the Lovecraftian video games come out as really good, well thought of projects, unfortunately many of them don't quite understand the source material, resulting in poorly made projects. Thankfully, The Sinking City is not one of them. Hello everybody, my name is Herc and welcome to a new horror visuals video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about The Sinking City, a third person action horror game with deep investigation mechanics. This video will have no spoilers and all of the footage you're going to see will either be from side story content or content without significant story elements. I just beat the game a few weeks ago and to be perfectly honest, I was not expecting to like it that much. I always had my doubts about it, so hopefully I will help you with those doubts too and help you decide if you should take a vacation to Augmont. The Sinking City is a love letter to H.P. Lovecraft's works. It has almost everything. It has fish people, inns mothers, Dagon, Cthulhu, Mayan deities, sea creatures, deep sea creatures, very deep sea creatures. If you read about it in the Lovecraft book, it probably exists in this game. To briefly tell you about the story, you basically play a private investigator named Charles Reed. He started having these dreams, or rather visions, and while investigating this phenomena, he finds out that someone in Oakmont could know more about this. So he goes there and the story starts right when the ship parks into Oakmont Harbor. The game takes place in Oakmont, a fictional island that suffered a pretty bad flood. More than half of the island has sunk underwater, resulting in majority of its population losing their lives and homes. This city is where the game happens. While you, of course, go to more instanced locations, 90% of the game happens inside this city. Streets, corners, libraries, government buildings, ruined factories, avenues, the city isn't just there to be an open world sandbox kind of thing. It is actually fully playable and has a key role in the gameplay. The atmosphere in Oakmont is superb. Frogwares has done an amazing job getting the tone right. It has foggy streets riddled with mud, puddles, ruins and rain. Lots and lots of rain. It doesn't always rain, of course, but it does most of the time. Whenever you just simply walk among its streets, you can just stop and admire the work that went into creating this city. The passion is clearly there. It's not always gloomy either. Sometimes the sun sets, shining on the puddles, creating a mesmerizing beauty of a scenery. It's ever-changing, active, and never fails to surprise. But the biggest and the most important factor in this city is that most of its streets are flooded as well. Cars are obsolete, so people use small boats to go around the city. You can find one of these boats at the end of almost every street. They're all free to use and pretty easy to control. Going through these flooded, ruined streets, you realize while the civilized parts of the city is still barely holding on, the sunk parts are riddled with terror, sometimes by people, sometimes by nightmarish creatures. The Sinking City is a game of environment storytelling. Each and every scenery tells a story, sometimes personal, sometimes about the city itself. One bad thing about the city, unfortunately, is its NPCs are pretty bland. Like, you could say that they've just gone mad, but they're usually unfazed by whatever is happening in the city. They seem to just continue with their daily lives. 
It isn't really bad when you try to create your own context, your own interpretation on your head, but objectively speaking, it is very immersion breaking at times. They just walk from one end to the other, doing random stuff, mostly not even doing anything, just walking. You can see that they're just there to be a part of the atmosphere, for clutter. But the story characters, on the other hand, are very interesting and most of them have their own personal stories, secrets and, mostly, side quests. They all have some kind of a key role in Reed's story and if you play your cards right, they help you with your case. The game has a rich cast of characters. You have mob bosses, racist groups, cultists, government officials or simply Aukman citizens that know a bit more than they should. Now let's touch a bit on the gameplay aspects of the Sinking City. First of all, again, this is a third person action horror game. It has quite the amount of shooting involved. And unfortunately, the combat mechanics in the game are terrible. Controlling your character is like driving a car in GTA 4. While in GTA 4 it is pretty normal and you can get used to it pretty quickly, in The Sinking City the player character just moves in a weird way that is hard to describe. It's like you're controlling a character in a game from the PlayStation 2 era, if that makes sense. Uh, what's worse is... You get in combat a lot in this game. In almost every quest, at every location you go to, you either fight a group of creatures or a group of people with guns. A quick detail here. Because money is obsolete in Augment, people use bullets to trade. Just like in the Metro series, bullet is the lifeblood of Augment and that is why it is also difficult to find. But the good thing is, you can actually craft these bullets for all of your weapon types if you have the correct materials. I assume the scarcity of these materials change depending on your game difficulty. And here I will give you a personal suggestion. While I started the game at the standard difficulty, I found out that the clunky combat merged with the scarce amount of resources resulted in a pretty bad and unfun combat situation. So I just pulled the difficulty back to the lowest and approached the combat as something obsolete. Because that's really how it feels like. It feels like they just put combat in the game as filler episodes. You go to a location to investigate and oh wow, first you gotta kill these 10 creatures. As I said, if you play the game in a lower difficulty, the combat won't be as big of an issue for you. If the mechanics were done right, if the character had a better movement feel to it, the difficulty would be fine, but since that is not the case, you just want to get rid of combat altogether and focus on the investigation side of the game. Now that we got the combat out of the way, which was probably the worst part of the game, let's focus on the best part of it, investigation. Now, in today's games, you don't really solve mysteries, right? Especially in open world games. You have your map, you have your question marks on the map, you have some other marks, like the map already shows you everything. They give you a quest and they tell you to go to the A location and they also tell you where this A location is. And somehow, while all of these pro gamer reviewers, all knowing entities, always endlessly talk about immersion, they rarely talk about how immersion breaking this is. Because I feel like people just got used to this Ubisoftian open world theme and they just don't question it anymore. Thankfully, The Sinking City is a very different game. Remember how I told you that the city itself plays a very crucial role in the gameplay? This is it. Your story mission, collectible missions and your side quests all of them give you small hints as to where you should go. They never show you where to go on your map. For example, you have this quest 
and the person in the quest wants you to go to the corner of the A and B street and look for the yellow building at the end of the C street. It's going to be a little challenging at the beginning to figure out these hints, but once you get used to its tempo, all of this is gonna feel natural. It's all going to make sense. Because let's be real, this is how we found our way before Google Maps existed, right? This alone gives the game an amazing detective story feel. It doesn't hold your hand and expects you to find your way with the hints you got. Sometimes the hints are pretty obvious, and sometimes they're actually very cryptic, and I noticed that those were some of the best quests. Solving mysteries in this game feels so rewarding and so good. But of course, address finding isn't the only investigation mechanic in this game. Again, you don't have Google, so let's say you're looking for a certain someone. How do you find them? Well, you go to the city hall and search for the records. You're looking for the culprit of a past crime. What do you do? You go to the police station and search for the records. And it's not just press E to find the records either. You gotta pick the correct evidence, the correct credentials and search under the correct categories. It's great, every mission is its own puzzle and they're all very satisfying to solve. Aside from this, when you go to the specific locations required for your mission, you sometimes find spiritual breadcrumbs spread around the place and you piece them together to figure out what actually happened in that one location to figure out the case. Not only piece them, but you gotta also put them in the correct order, because order is also important when solving these cases. There is also the Mind Palace, which is a metaphoric palace, of course, inside Reed's mind. When you gather the evidence for your case, you piece them together on your mind and find the possible outcome of the case. You basically solve it on your mind before taking action on it. You can always find the culprit on your mind, but the game always gives you a choice to take action or not. Oh yeah, we also have choices in this game. Surprise, right? This game has content, bro. Let me tell ya. So, while the game has choices, they don't really have an effect on the game's ending, but rather your own story. You may try to help some people while hurting other people, or you may just don't meddle with their affairs at all, or you may try to double cross someone, they don't really have any effect on the overall story. They sometimes change the rewards and they obviously change the outcome of that particular mission, but uh, that's it really. I found the choices to be very well thought of though. They are rarely black and white choices and mostly they consist of grey lines. I had a very difficult time making some of the choices, I gotta say. Now let's get to the part that we've all been waiting for the horror. While The Sinking City might be a game focused on action, combat and investigation, it is also a horror game. So how is it as a horror game? Well, the answer is it depends. If you have thalassophobia, which is fear of deep ocean or the sea, this game will be extremely scary for you in some parts. Sometimes in the game, you're gonna have to die deep into the ocean. I found those parts to be the most unsettling. Not because of stuff like jump scares or combat, but rather because of the abyss. There is the abyss, you occasionally see some things in that abyss, I'm not gonna say what they are, and they might freak you out a bit. They sure did freak me out sometimes. But in general, it's not really a horror game. You find nightmarish Lovecraftian creatures, but the encounters are never really scary. The horror as a theme though is of course still there. The locations are very unsettling, it has disturbing themes, creatures have good horrifying designs, but they do not really play into being scary. They're just targets for you to shoot. Which is again, why the combat in the game feels stale. 
Whether you shoot humans or creatures, the feedback is usually the same. I wish the game had more underwater scenes because they're absolutely terrifying, but unfortunately you mostly play the game inside the city above the ground, away from all the horrors lying under the ocean. It feels like wasted potential, to be honest, but at least we get to see some of it. Overall, The Sinking City is a good game. It's a very good game. Unfortunately, during its launch, the game was riddled with technical issues and this, combined with the clunky gameplay, robbed the people in a wrong way and most people turned it down without even trying it. I was also one of those people. I'm very thankful that I finally tried it because this is easily one of my favorite video games now. I even liked the investigative gameplay so much, I bought the latest Sherlock Holmes game made by Frogwares because it has the exact same investigative gameplay mechanics which I adored in this game. If you had your doubts about this game, I strongly urge you to try it out, especially if you're a fan of H.P. Lovecraft's works and the Cthulhu mythos in general, you're going to appreciate the passion that went into creating this project. If you're equipped with extensive knowledge of the short stories, you will most probably see many familiar stories and faces in this game. The only thing I didn't like about it, as I said, was its combat. But because I didn't really play the game for the combat, eh, I didn't care about it that much. Now, the tricky thing is, the current Steam version of this game is probably broken. Why? Well, that's a very long story, but to briefly tell you about it, uh, the developer Frogwares got into a legal dispute with the publisher Nakon, and currently while Nakon still publishes the game on Steam and on previous gen consoles, Frogwares doesn't officially support them. They don't roll out updates for them, they don't really patch them, they're just there and they're probably still broken. I will include a blog post written by Frogwares in the description below to better explain the situation because it is a long and messy situation and I don't really know all the details so it's best if you read it yourself. If you're going to buy the game, consider buying it from their own website which I will link in the description below and if you're gonna get the console versions get the next gen ones. I am not sure about the previous gen versions really, you can check their website and hunt for that information yourself. I played the game on an Xbox Series X using the next gen version of the game. The other thing is, Frogwares is a Ukrainian game development studio and as you all know there is a war in Ukraine. They talk about this on their Twitter feed occasionally, so if you decide to get The Sinking City, make sure to check out their other games too and support them as best as you can. I hope I was able to help you decide if you should give this game a chance. If you do, let me know what you think. If you already gave it a chance, again, let me know what you think of this game. As always, thank you very much for watching until the end. If you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe and maybe even drop a like on the video, it really helps. I am not sure what my next video is going to be about, but you can always follow me on Twitter at Horror Visuals for the latest updates. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.